unless you realize silver is far more important than the price would 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 dictate and unfortunately a little bit of a rough day in the silver market as we will get to although uh perhaps pull some positives out of that if such a thing can be done and either case nice to see you back here again this morning and how's everything going with you <clears throat> it's good to be back chris i had uh i don't know i'm going on three weeks of the of the worst three weeks i can ever remember um getting a kidney stone three weeks ago and uh, two surgeries later and uh, a bunch of rest and rehab. I'm on the mend and almost fully back to normal. But uh, I'll tell you, watching the price of silver fall is somewhat uh, akin to having a kidney stone. I, I jest. It, 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 it's rough, man. It's definitely rough. In both respects, it's rough. It's rough to to believe in something so strongly and to understand the the fundamentals and, and the logic behind it and see it move counterintuitively. Um, uh, I understand the pain people are feeling, believe me. And uh, although just like my kidney stone being gone and being on the mend and seeing brighter times ahead, I do honestly believe that we will see that exact same thing as it relates to the metals market. Uh, the fundamentals have never, ever, ever, ever been better. And you can sense the desperation. Now, I haven't seen or read what was the trigger to see the price of silver get dropped today, but let's look at what happened last week as an example. Last week, when the price of silver got clobbered out of nowhere, we saw 25,890,000 ounces dumped onto the market in 15 minutes. That's 5,178 COMEX contracts dumped onto the market in a period of 15 minutes to drive the price down. That reeks of desperation. There is not a legitimate trader on the planet who is trying to maximize the return that he or she would get by selling such a massive amount of silver that at the open in New York would dump, in essence, what amounts to uh, what... Um, uh, I don't know, a, a, a massive amount of, of yearly mine supply, a, a, an amount of silver that if it were dumped all at once would guarantee the worst possible settlement and would inflict the most psychological damage. And you can see it's, it's an act of desperation. It makes absolutely no sense. And I'm sure that this volatility that we see is reminiscent, I think, of big moves ahead, at least when we look back over Last several years, we see great volatility before we see big moves. And this right here, to me, is great volatility. At the same time, it makes no sense. It lacks, uh, it, it lacks all credibility. It lacks, um, it, it lacks all logic. So why did it fall today? Not sure. But uh, I, I can, if you look at what happened last week, after they knocked the hell out of it, it came right back up. So there's great strength and demand in the $23, $24 range. But as it continues to get above 25 and higher, it's meeting a lot of resistance that I think ultimately moves in the other direction when we look at the amount of withdrawals that we're seeing coming off the exchange. And when you talk about all the withdrawals coming off the exchange, to me, this year so far, we've seen about 13,000 silver contracts standing for delivery, over 2,000 tons standing for delivery. And, um, you know, I think when you talk about, that's just COMEX, let alone the LBMA or, or the ETFs, the price is a tool of misdirection. The biggest money in the world is using this atmosphere, this rhetoric, uh, this price volatility and counterintuitive price action really to allow them to, to corner the physical supply. And I think that's something that's very, very important for people to understand, not just silver, We've seen over 240 tons of gold delivered off of COMEX since January 1st. This is an environment that never was meant to be a delivery mechanism for silver or for gold. And, you know, last week when I was trying to do a little preparation and uh, laying around trying to recover, I noticed that in seven trading days last week and, and a few days prior, we saw 55 tons of, of gold delivered in seven trading sessions. So, it's getting to the point where price to me is nothing other than a tool of misdirection for the big money who is using it uh, as, an, as, as a subsidy, if you will, to, uh, to de-dollarize.
Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, it it is a little bit unusual to see. Obviously, a lot of the trading driven by whatever the Fed is or isn't doing. Although, as we've talked about plenty, we have a deficit going on. And as I've been reading more and more about in the last couple of weeks, it, it seems like the solar numbers uh, and the, the amount of silver that's going to be required to be put in there growing even faster than perhaps many had previously expected in some of the uh, Silver Institute report and other reports that have come out. Um, it seems like we've reached the end of the thrifting of being more efficient with silver in the solar panels. And now some of the uh, panels that are being used more regularly calling for even more silver. And again, you mentioned that we're seeing the decline in inventories. Perhaps the only thing that's held this together is so far that India has basically stopped importing silver uh, compared to what we saw last year. So, uh, yeah, well, but, you know, so they say, I think that they're still probably buying it. Maybe a lot of these countries who who give us official numbers are really less than genuine. And I read that report. I found that report to be um, startling in it. It talks about the U.S. Geological Survey Society that came out and said that the, the world's silver supply could be completely depleted by 2036. I was kind of blown away by that. It also said that silver is rapidly depleting in Mexico, where they expect, uh, according to the report, to have the majority of all its silver assets in the ground depleted by 2030. And then when you see the second largest mine in the world in Mexico, uh, the Pensaquito mine, I think it's called, uh, you know, shut down for a labor strike. Uh, then you see Peru has 7% down in, in uh, between January and April. Their, their production has been 7% down. These are the two biggest silver producing countries in the world. And so you see a falling supply, an increase in demand. You see massive deliveries. Put all this together. The price is bullshit. The price doesn't mean anything. The price is being used to allow an agenda to, to be uh, administered. And the agenda is from the top down, the big, big money. And it's very difficult for an analyst like yourself or, or you know, an amateur analyst like myself to try and make heads or tails of why things aren't behaving the way that we would intuitively expect them to behave. And, you know, all I can simply say is that the, the drawdown of supply from the most sophisticated, biggest money in the world betrays everything else that we're seeing in terms of price action. And um, I think people need to take a step back and realize that, that if this were such an asset that was really indicative of its falling price, then why is it disappearing the way that it is? Why are we seeing stockpiles across the globe completely and totally uh, disappear? And, and I think um, that's where people need to really focus on because, um, misdirection is is the name of the game and in a in a in a game that is as vital and important as something like silver which is you know look it's as much a strategic metal as it is an industrial metal and just just in its military uses alone but in an asset where a branch of the government tells us that it will be gone by 2036 completely uh, by their estimations um yeah i think you know certainly doing what they can to secure this country's national interests or every country's national interests would come far ahead of just about anything else. And if you are going to do that, you are going to use every trick in the book in order to be able to accumulate as much as you can, um, securing, I guess, the future of whatever industrial applications silver is needed for as far as the government is concerned. I think this is a lot bigger than just traders controlling the paper price. I think there is a directive from above. Look at the U.S. Mint numbers. Look at the, the, the interview Bix Weir just did with the director of the Silver Eagle program at the U.S. Mint, who admitted that he was told from his superiors to um, just to basically produce as many Silver Eagles as they possibly can, the smallest amount they possibly can without getting massive backlash. You actually admitted this on, on an interview. So there's a lot going on that just doesn't make sense unless you realize silver is far more important than the price would, would, would dictate. And seeing the massive deliveries by the biggest, most sophisticated money in the world only underscores that for me.